Jean-Pierre. We are uh, um, 11.5 million kilometers from the planet Earth. If this was a soccer ball, well, it's the same size from this point. It's um, four times the distance between the Earth and Moon. But from L1, it looks like we see the, the way we see the Moon from Earth. So imagine that the images you will be seeing are filmed from this spot, and this is uh, unique in humanity's history, and it's another chance for environmental movements. Thanks to these images, we can really try to acquire this consciousness of our planet. So if it is a soccer ball, where would we be? Well, I haven't made the exact calculation, but we would probably be much further than here. So if it would be a soccer ball about 50 meters, we would see the ball, but, well, I haven't calculated things precisely. So Virginie, you're here with us today. Thank you. I guess you have to uh, make sure that the sound is um, properly organized with the uh, sound technicians. Thank you for being here. Well, for me, it means a lot to be here. Lena had talked about a type of uh, power. Well, I have a sense of power when I can transmit this music to work to preserve the earth, the oceans, and the whales. So I am very honored and happy to be here with you. I have chosen a piece for these images, which is called the Salutation of Love. It is my expression of love for the planet. So with a lot of love, nice vibrations, and uh, musical frequencies with our souls, we can reconcile ourselves with everything that, that has happened. So I will thus just do a brief checkup with the technicians, and then we can send our message. Well, I will take that time to say that there will be a question and answer session with Paul Watson at the there, there's a box where you can leave your questions. And for those who are following us throughout the world, there is a button on the site which enables you to go onto the Curious site and you can uh, put your questions there. So thank you to Curious for this partnership. There's also a petition that you can sign to call upon people to make this connection with the Earth. So now we will be at um, one point or 11.5 um, million kilometers from the planet Earth.
Merci Virginie. Thank you Virginie. Thank you very much. Donc Paul, quand on voit So Paul, when we see these images, this color and this extraordinary beauty, what date was this? These are images from uh, the 15th of May last. But this is, we have others that are more recent, but this is the one we wanted to use. There are some from the day before yesterday on the site. When we see these images, what do you feel when you see the earth uh, revolving like this? What does Paul Watson feel when he sees this? I see is, is life. Ce que je vois, c'est la vie. This is a living planet. C'est une planète vivante. Of all the rocks that are revolving around the sun right now, this is the one that is alive. Malgré tous les, les, les pierres face au soleil, c'est la seule qui soit vraiment en vie. Because it has that one element which makes it possible for it to be alive. Parce qu'elle a cet élément qui rend tout ceci possible. And that element, of course, is water. Et cet élément, bien sûr, c'est l'eau. Water is the, the blood of the planet. L'eau, encore une fois, c'est le sang de cette planète. Like your blood, it's salty. Et comme votre sang, il est salé. Like your blood, it removes waste. Et comme votre sang, il enlève les, les, les déchets. Like your blood, it, blood it provides nutrients to the cells. Et comme votre sang, il apporte les, les, les nutriments à vos cellules. When you put a dam on a river, you're cutting off an artery. Quand vous en, quand vous le coupez d'une rivière, c'est comme couper une artère. Which poisons the land behind. Qui, pour, qui pollue la terre autour. And starves the land below et qu'on pollue un peu plus loin, ça de plus en plus loin. It's an incredible element. There's nothing like it anywhere in the universe. Il n'y a rien de tel dans l'univers. C'est un élément extraordinaire. The only element that is actually lighter as a solid than it is as a liquid. It is, huh? Lighter. Ah, C'est un élément qui est plus léger que tous les autres liquides. And if it wasn't for that fact, the oceans would be frozen from top to bottom. Et si ce n'était pas le cas, les, les, les océans seraient dans le fond, posés tout en bas. So constant circulation from liquid to solid to gas. Avec un mouvement permanent, du, du, une évolution permanente du liquide au solide et au gaz. Et, au gaz. And it actually even has its own mind, which is really quite impressive. Et en fait, elle a sa propre pensée, cette eau. And to give you an example of this, if you're in, uh, you see a pond and it's, uh, say, five or ten degrees below zero. Et par exemple, si vous prenez un plan d'eau qui est cinq ou dix degrés en dessous de zéro. But it hasn't frozen. Mais il n'a pas gelé, ce plan d'eau. Then you take a little stone and you throw it into the middle of the pond. Et alors vous prenez un tout petit caillou que vous jetez au milieu de ce plan d'eau. And watch it freeze right before your eyes. Et soudain, devant vos yeux, l'eau se gèle d'un coup. It's almost like the water was in such a meditative uh, position that it, it forgot to freeze. En fait, c'est comme si ce plan d'eau était en train de méditer et qu'il était calme. But when you wake it up, it said, "Oh, I have to freeze." Et lorsque vous le lorsque vous le réveillez soudainement, il se rappelle qu'il devait geler. So water has memory. En fait, l'eau a de la mémoire. And there's many experiments that are taking place to illustrate just that. Et il y a eu beaucoup, beaucoup d'expériences qui ont démontré que l'eau a de la mémoire. But one of the most fascinating things I think about water is that it's been here for as long as uh, this planet has been here. Mais la chose la plus incroyable à propos de l'eau, c'est qu'elle est sur cette planète depuis le début, depuis que cette planète existe. When you drink a glass of water, quand vous buvez un verre d'eau, Just think that that glass of water uh, millions of years ago Pensez juste que ce verre d'eau depuis des millions millions d'années was once pissed by a dinosaur. <laughs> Pardon. Qu'un jour... <laughs> okay, make a difference. Pissed by, by a dinosaur. <laughs> c'est bien ça. Qu'un jour, uh, c'est du pipi de dinosaur. <laughs> so what I'm trying to illustrate is that it's in constant circulation. Water comes through us and goes on to something else. Ce, qu essaie, ce que Paul essaie de vous dire, c'est que l'eau est, un, est, un, est en mouvement permanent, un cycle permanent qui passe par, qui passe par les glaces et continue son cycle. And it's that circulation of water that makes life possible on this planet. Et c'est cette, cette circulation de l'eau qui permet à la vie d'être sur Terre. And right now, what we're seeing is a rapid scarcity of water. 
Et là maintenant, on affronte de, de vrais problèmes avec l'eau. Water that is useful to us. De l'eau qui est pourtant qui nous est pourtant utile à nous les êtres humains. Because we're foolishly wasting that water. Parce qu'on est bêtement en train de la gaspiller. And therefore, we have to be aware that it is the most valuable substance in our existence. Et il, il est très important que nous prenions conscience que c'est l'élément le plus vital de notre système euh, sur cette terre. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Paul. Merci. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Philippe. Now we're going to try to do something under it with Lena and Virginia. We didn't rehearse this, and Virginie was illustrating a guided meditation that you are going to back, Lena. Thank you to the two of you. We're going to dim the lights. We saw Elix a moment ago, who will be with us all day long. We'll talk about this in a moment. Elix, who's already in space, we feel like joining him. You can start with music, and then I'll fit in. Well, we're going to look at the video, the video of the Earth that is, uh, is uh, rotating, and this will be accompanying our meditation. Imaginez que vous êtes à l'eau. Think that you're lying down at the surface of water. Your face is looking at an infinite sky. Your arms and legs go loose. <clears throat> you relax. It becomes more fluid. You're borne off, completely supported by this warm, live water that's free flowing. <clears throat> The ocean is rocking you in its maternal role in this cosmic atmosphere. Breathe in. Exhale. Open your heart and receive. Let yourself be overcome with this feeling, uh, this oceanic feeling. Your sp mind is emptying itself of all thought. Uh, you are nothing. You are reduced or to uh, slight tremors, feeling as if uh, water was sending you messages. Uh, adding to your memory, telling you its history, that is also the story of your history. Become aware of a, it, uh, its presence within your body. Try to enter in communion with the water within yourself. Your blood that is flowing in your veins, the ocean that is going through your cells, we have uh, the traces of the primordial ocean that is uh, our mother. Um, ocean connects us with all the rains of life. Uh, inhale. Exhale slowly. After breathing deeply, align your breath with uh, the manelial uh, heartbeats of the biosphere. Inhale. Exhale. With each breath you take, your awareness becomes greater. Inhale. Exhale. Your awareness becomes the ocean. Around you, light is dimming. For 
the stars will be starting to show in the sky. You hear somewhere a school of dolphins. A lone whale is passing you, and you will breathe together. You align your breathing to its that goes from the ocean to the sky. Inhale. Exhale. You turn your eyes to the stars, the celestial sky. Now you are coming to meet the stars. Taste the waters of the ocean, and the, your very being embraces the whole cosmic universe. Inhale, exhale. And down below, you see the Earth, uh, our gorgeous planet Earth, uh, our Earth of the, the ocean. Feel this flow of love that links you to the ocean and thank it for its generosity. Ask him to pardon you for your, uh, uh, your lack of awareness. Uh, Transmit to it your, your potential love with every inhale and breath. With the breath, you find this current of love flowing through you. You, you inhale, you, re you receive, you exhale, and you are giving. Let this wave of love penetrate all your cells. It's a promise of reconciliation with Mother Earth, with Aya, and with ourselves. Inhale. Exhale. And thanks. Give thanks. Now we're going to go up to the depth of the universe with Jean-Pierre. And before that, I suggest you breathe deeply. Stretch out your muscles and relax and to receive the next meditation. Virginia is still with us. Thank you for the vibration. Uh, it's as if the vibration of the earth was coming through your violin. We're going to, we're going to dim the light. Jean-Pierre, that'll be great for you. We're all with you and Virginia, the universe. A uh, hundred million galaxy catapulted by the Bing Bong. We have the Milky, uh, Milky with all its stars. Uh, 
You avoid the center of uh, this uh, the, um, black eye. Will black hole will go every elsewhere. Uh, we go to the extremity where we have uh, the sun with its planets, uh, and where you have the jewel of the universe uh, in the the black sky with its uh, its with its stars. You see a, a blue light. You go beyond Saturn and Jupiter and their rings. The blue becomes uh, this uh, point is still small. You do you use you use do slant on between them. Uh, you have red of the march. The uh, Earth is not far, but it's still only a small dot. You hold your breath. Uh, this is the next planet that you're getting to. And you close your eyes. It just. Uh, the source of energy, this mysterious energy, is going to take you to the sun slowly, but sure, you are feeling the heat of the sun. It's uh, gentle. You decelerate, or you're just about to get there. You let yourself be guided, and your speed goes slower and slower. You inhale, you exhale. All of a sudden, you don't budge anymore. There you are at the L1 grand, you have relaxed. Your eyes are still closed. The heat of the sun is in your back, and you know that it's there across from you. You feel its presence. It's a force of gravity that is equal to that of the sun. You unfold your arms. You float. You feel so good. You're ready for the experience. You inhale. You exhale. You have waited for this moment all of your life. Uh, you are ready to look at the earth. You inhale and exhale just the last time. Then you open your eyes, and there you are. There it is, and it's slowly rotating. Uh, I'm sorry to run. <laughs> It's more beautiful than all the planets that you visited. It is the crown jewel. It has a. It hides behind the clouds, the green spaces, and the ochre and prison, and all this water, these gigantic oceans that are at the surface and that intrigue you. The blue planet, the ocean. Uh, such a gorgeous and fragile Bible. And you go toward the Earth. You're floating like a spectrum to go toward it. And as you get closer and closer, it continues turning. And like a kaleidoscope, it brings you a new marvels. You're above it in the orbit. You stretch out your arms and your fingers and, and lightly feel uh, this atmosphere. You go closer to uh, the strength, and you feel the strength of the storms and the, a gentle wind. You, you go to the pole, and you get feel you tremble. You go down to the equator, equator, and then it makes you warm. And you plunge in the water to get cooled off. It's less deep than you would have thought. You put your foe, you put your face close to the water, and you inhale salt water. There's small little creatures that are are. Are, um, are sw swimming, and these are hump whales. Uh, the waters, they're connected to the rest of the cosmos. They feel uh, your presence. They want to say something. You listen. You listen to its uh, song. They want to uh, warn you of a danger. Uh, you're talking about these creatures that are destroying the oceans and and the earth. You don't understand it was possible. The whale is asking you for your help. You say, don't worry. You try and go and find these creatures. You find one, and then more. And if you see that there are thousands of them, millions and billions of them, these are creatures that are various colors. You don't understand what they are doing, but they carry out, they're living frenetically, unlike the whales. Only a few are linked to the cosmos. They have forgotten the basic rules of life. You try to communicate them. You say three things that are easy to understand. Meditate love and dream. 
you come back uh, to the hump whales and you say to be a little bit of patience and everything should work out all right. You'll come back to be sure that everything has been orderly. It's time to leave. You go back into the orbit. You can get yourself sucked in until L1. You look at the Earth the last time. A moment later, it's just a little, uh, the crown of the universe, a light blue dot. Merci, Jean-Pierre. Merci, Virginie. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Thank you, Virginie. Virginie Rouillard will come back later. Jean-Pierre, the blue cycle, I talked about it on the 1st of November. And we're writing a story. And at the end of the century, it will be recognized either as the black century or the blue century. The blue century is Paul Gardner's dream, not Paul Watson. Paul Gardner is the hero of my book. And he knows that this cycle, this uh, century is a decisive century. If you go five or a thousand or five, thousand years from now, like we talk about the age of light, we might talk about the age of the blue um, dot, uh, the year that people, the century that people became aware of the need to work with the cosmos. It's an opportunity and a danger. If we try to participate in this uh, thrust of, to reach the blue and dot, we will realize that we have fantastic opportunities and that the world in uh, which we live is the fruit of our nightmares and our dreams. Uh, and let us live in love and listen to the whale. This is the secret of our being. Thank you for this invitation. You didn't come alone. They're one of your best friends. Uh, who's here with us, Miguel. He produced these gorgeous pictures that you just saw. The interpreters do not have any of these texts, so we apologize that this is not um, more refined. Now, Michael, what is uh, the gift you're going to give us? Please show us the next slide. I'm going to read these pictures. Uh, last April, we produced the first video and we put it on internet and on Instagram. You tagged NASA and NASA said, how did you make these blocks? Because they, these uh, pictures, uh, we said it was something important to do because uh, we went to the, and to all the way to the dream of Al Gore and um, and uh, Michael was working at Aerospatial. He has a book, uh, Claire de Terre, and this is uh, the friendship we developed. We call this a project. It's called Blue Turn. You can look at www.blueturn.earth. You can find videos, and, and in the coming weeks, there, there'll be an app for Android telephone and Apple. And the videos that you saw today, you can put them on all smartphones and, and even and uh, on buildings. Uh, on, and we want all this to be publicized uh, free of charge. We want it to become part of the domain of the NASA. It can be part of artistic or educational projects. Mikael came especially from Tel Aviv uh, for this event. Thank you for having come because there are people who are connected in the Middle East, and we, we see hell. Well, hello to my wife and my children, says Mikael. Your dream is that this picture be projected everywhere. At the end of the day, it will be on the screen of the Grand Rex to the giant screen on the huge buildings and on your watch from Let's say, go 
back to what Madame Robia said, she's a violinist. She's done everything she can with her music to support this wonderful cause, maybe the biggest cause that exists. What was I? I was an a 3D engineer in Israel. I wanted to do something. What could I do? And I'm really happy that, thanks to my profession, I was able to serve such a huge cause. I think that each profession of each person can help in one way or another. Uh, uh, everybody that... Uh, from the mason to the cabinet maker, the world would be in different if we had this picture of the world permanently before us. And here we see Mother Earth. Now, Yasin, would you come and join me? We're going to have a one-minute meditation. Uh, and he will present Elix. Bonjour Yassine. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oui, enchanté, c'est super. Donc, je ne sais pas si la régie peut nous envoyer Elix. Elix. Thank you for bringing us Elix. Here, there he is. He's on you. There you've got Elix. You've created this being, and it's gone around the world. And tell us about the adventure of Elix. Then you can see it for the day of the oceans. Elix. It's a sort of a particle of humanity. It's an elementary particle. When I created it, I came from the digital world, the numeric world, with these very sophisticated and complicated mechanisms. And one day, I wanted to communicate. So I tried to find some way to communicate, something that would mean something to everyone. And you defined the commonalities of all the people on this planet. So the, I found three commonalities. The first common point is that we, we were all children. We forget that we were all children. And our reflexes are such that we can reactivate them. It's a wonderful time of life. You're learning. And our imagination is everywhere all the time. We have the possibility to go from reality to imagination. Now, the second point of commonalities is the, the first, the ma main way of communicating is drawing. It's a non-verbal expression. We saw this uh, in a rather dramatic way, in a tragic way this year. And in my pictures, this is a picture with a drawing. You keep talking about my, my drawings. Third common point um, that you're illustrating here is the smile. 17 muscles uh, of all people. And so unless you've got some physical part, but it's 17 muscles. And it says a lot more than words can. In the world where we're trying to find the differences, this was really an effort to find the smallest common denominator and take it around the world, all over the planet. The United Nations uh, looked at it and asked me whether it could uh, be used uh, for the Universal Human Rights Day and, uh, and for the 70th anniversary of UNIX. So in 70 days, UNIX, uh, one uh, went around the world in 70 days. Uh, the really good idea was to do something together, to send uh, the drawings all over the world. Uh, from the, and we published uh, the, the pictures uh, with Emily Poulins, uh, like she did. Uh, so Alex went around the world. Sometimes he went to Tehran, he went to the Gaza Strip, he went to Ukraine. The next day was in Ruza, without a visa, without a passport, and always smiling. Hands of all colors that were holding the drawing, and the agencies asked us to invite, invite uh, Alex as a representation of our imagination. And that this was a way of, uh, of uh, standing 
standing together, uh, a sort of a citizen of the world, uh, uh, uniting ourselves uh, uh, and giving us guidance and direction. It also gives us a lot of energy. Uh, and we, uh, you saw that as you were talking about it this morning. Uh, you sort of light up. Yes, exactly. Well, you're making it exist uh, by sending these pictures and talking about Alex as if Alex existed. This is the strength of our imagination, of our capacity to create and to generate pictures and ideas. I'm adding just, I'm giving a little bit of a push to make it tangible and be sure make it here at Tara today. The group, the group that's going to be joining us uh, um, later on, he's on a boat and he's a, he's a little bit all over. He's sort of omnipresent. He's going to go into space. Uh, well, this is, um, well, I think you have Jean-Pierre. This will be the most gorgeous of its trip, to, but you're jumping the gun. It, it, it'll be really meaningful when it gets to the stars. Thank you, Yassine. I suggest that we have a five-minute break, and then Paul Watson will be with us again. We're going to go from uh, the pee-pee of the dinosaur, the, the wee-wee of the dinosaur, to the excrements of the whale. So stand up, stand up and stretch out, and, and five-minute meditational break. So then afterwards, we'll be all ready to re receive Paul Watson. Well, if you are really interested in all these dreams, uh, there is uh, there are five boxes. That'll be the fifth dream. If you have dreams, write them down. There's a petition, more than 10,000 people have signed the petition uh, calling for respect for the ocean, life. Uh, and if you have other suggestions, other questions, for, uh, we'll have discussions uh, with Paul Watson. And you can also put them on the site or deposit them in the box at the entrance. So, see you in four minutes since I've been talking for one minute. <laughs> 